She believes Cup begins with a loss for the Canadians, 2-0 to the Americans, as we welcome you back inside our One Soccer studio. Annie Petrillo alongside Jessica Lisi, Claire Rustad joining us from Salt Springs, B.C., a former national team player, 2008 Olympian as well. Uh, obviously a disappointing start here, Claire. We discussed everything in the pregame. We know what the Canadian women are dealing with off the pitch here in the fight with the Federation, saying that they'd be playing under protest. It did look like a very shaky start start for the Canadians uh, what did you make overall did you ever feel like they were in this uh, mentally or maybe even just feel like they were in this as far as going up against an American squad which we know there's a good rivalry there I mean as we talked about before when you get to this sort of professional level you have to be able to separate the off the field stuff from the on the field stuff and when it came to their on field performance it was lackluster at times concerning I think the first 20 minutes of the game um, were particularly concerning from a defensive perspective and this certainly was not the team performance that I was hoping for uh, and certainly not the defensive performance we're used to seeing from them. I think a lot of times they were uh, forcing themselves into having to make last ditch um, defensive plays um, just by being a step or two behind the ball and just not being organized in general and then going forward just unable to really connect and relying on long balls with no numbers forward has to be better again like we spoke about at halftime they have to find an attacking identity i'm still not clear on where that comes from i think it's important to get players minutes in the game like this so um so so getting some of those players who are pot potentially a bit on the bubble particularly in the attacking side um hellstrom in particular getting her some minutes uh very important I, I still didn't see an attacking spark and um and and i think that's what concerns me most because i think going into a world cup a home World Cup for Australia, where even a mediocre Australian side in front of a home crowd, I don't trust them, and it'll, they will be difficult to beat. We know that the Americans, I mean, this is obviously a team that has a ton of depth. We know they're missing players like Tobin Heath and Kristen Press. I mean, these are you know players who have been out of fitness and, and dealing with injuries, but still very much in the mix to make that World Cup team. They're not here with the She Believes Cup recovering for some injuries. So do you feel like if the Canadians could have taken a game from the Americans, this would have been it? Yeah, I definitely do think that, you know, at the end of the day, they're missing players like Tobin Heath. They're missing players like Kristen Press. They're missing players. There's so many great players mm -hmm. that they are missing right now. So it definitely would have been the game to take away from the Americans. Americans. It's a little unfortunate. It was really sloppy all around today, both defensively, offensively. I felt that they really took away from what you know they're good at. Typically, Canada is great in getting their fullbacks into the attack and getting that overlapping run to get those uh, back post balls in or playing through a player like Fleming in the midfield to draw people in. And we, we really didn't do that today. And it was, it was really disappointing. You had also said, Jess, that this is the type of game as well. We had mentioned the bubble players, the fringe players, trying to show Bev Priestman that they, you know, they're, they want to be chosen to go to Australia slash New Zealand for that World Cup. How frustrating is a game like this where you're barely touching the ball? Yeah, you know, we were talking about Hellstrom. She came on and we were looking for that that spark plug in, in, in the final third and it didn't she didn't touch the ball very much. So as a player who's coming on to prove a point and you finally get that that moment and you don't touch the ball or you're not given the opportunity to do much with it, it it's very infuriating and definitely I'm sure she walked off the field very frustrated today. Yeah, and we did see, you know, Lacasse coming on in as well. And, I mean, is it also you giving credit, Claire, to the Americans and keeping the ball and, and not allowing the Canadians to find that offensive spark? What do, you, what do you think it was? Was it a combination, obviously, the Americans being good, but what could the Canadians maybe have done differently? Yeah, um, I, I don't think the Americans were that good today. Uh, I, I think they are a good team. I don't think they're anywhere near what they used to be. I think they, as you guys already mentioned, they were missing a lot of players. Really disappointing to see... Um, them have to play without Rose Lavelle, without Smith up front. But uh, I, I don't think they were particularly good today. I thought um, even on their first goal, that's a ball that's played behind Morgan, who has to make the best of it by laying it off um, to Swanson. And and a lot of those, a lot of those typically laser sharp uh, and very focused passes in the front for the Americans just weren't there. And 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 really more of the Canadians just seem to be behind the play. Um, uh, no matter what they were, what they did, and their positioning just wasn't good enough, defensively in particular. Yeah, and this is exactly what you're talking about, Claire, when you take a look at the Americans opening this one up in the seventh minute. Yeah, I, just again, like, look how much space the Canadians give them here. Chapman actually backs off of Rodman at one point, gives her, gives her about 15 yards of space to play around with this ball, doesn't put enough pressure on it, 
right here, you see, gives her just enough space to get this cross off. It's actually behind Morgan, like I said, so that nobody takes any defensive accountability for marking either Morgan or Swanson. Really, really disappointing and not what we saw in the Olympic Games from the Canadians. Yeah, the Canadians were very strong defensively at the Olympics because, again, they weren't exactly a scoring force. It was their defensive game that got them through. They capitalized on taking some penalties, obviously got some great stops when it went to penalty kicks uh, by Steph LeBay, and they were able to convert. So that's been the one, if you're looking at a strength for the Canadians, it's definitely been their defense, which kind of lets them down here today. Let's take a look at the second goal. Swanson getting the brace in that first half. This one coming in the 34th minute. And this just, just seems like a complete miscue here. Yeah, it, you know, it's just, it's a very frustrating thing to watch. It's the fact that Buchanan wasn't there, wasn't closer to support. You know, the ball back was very rough. And you just see Sheridan, obviously, is out of net. It's, it's just a very frustrating play overall. Not a great read by Gilles to play that ball back. Again, out of position for both Buchanan and Sheridan. It's, it's just frustrating. That's definitely not something you want to see at this level. Claire, you... Yeah, that goal is really... Oh, sorry, Andy. <laughs> no, no, that goal, that <laughs> goal is emblematic of how that first half went. Yeah. Right? Everybody's out of position. Everyone's a step behind the play. The pass is off. The communication is off. It really just summarized how that first half went for the Canadians. Yeah, and I was just going to I was going to lean on your expertise because I know you played center mid quite a bit, but you also played in that defensive position. Whenever you're passing the ball back to your goalkeeper, it's, it has to be decisive. It, it, well, it has to be perfect. The communication has to be good, but you also have to have support. You can see Gilles get sucked way out to the left side. They're not necessarily her fault, but Buchanan's almost at the other side of the 18-yard box. Mm -hmm. Nobody in the middle. So if Buchanan and Gilles get split that far apart from each other, there has to be a central midfielder who's going to drop back and fill that space so that you have some cover. Yeah, so that's a that's a tough one for the Canadians, and they were trying to bounce back into this one. 46 minute, they do end up getting their first shot on target. Janine Becky getting that one as this first half was coming to an end. So Alyssa Nair ends up getting the All-State save of the match. Great strike by Janine. Uh, great save as well by the American keeper. It led to a corner for the Canadians. They were unable to capitalize. Imagine if the Canadians, this is the coulda, shoulda, woulda game, right? Imagine if they did get that goal right near the end of the first half. Would it have changed the complexion of this one? Probably, but they're unable to get on the board, so it ends up being 2-0. Uh, a lot more that I want to get into in this one. We're going to take a break here. There were some changes on the pitch as well by Bev Priestman. We've seen her in the position before. Janine Becky moving to the full back position. What did you make of that? What did you also make of the play of Kaylin Sheridan? Uh, again, talking about some defensive breakdowns here for the Canadians, but uh, perhaps the goalkeeper could use a little bit of help in tonight's match. We'll get more on that on One Soccer. Here's a look at your full-time stats. The Americans coming away with a 2-0 victory here. Swanson with the brace for the Americans. A 14 the shots to six, seven on target. So needless to say, the Canadian keeper, Kaylin Sheridan, was busy in this one. And she was tested early as well as the Americans were putting on the pressure. We know their first goal coming in the seventh minute as we welcome you back inside our One Soccer studio. Andy, Jess, Claire joining you now. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Kaylin Sheridan because, Claire, how much faith do you have, at least in that goalkeeper position, for the Canadians? I mean, big shoes to fill. Steph LeBay, we keep saying the Canadians Olympic champs. She's a massive reason why. Then she announces her retirement. Uh, do you feel Kaylin Sheridan has stepped in seamlessly? Absolutely. I think the one thing that the Canadians have um, have always had historically is a bit of an abundance of riches when it comes to the goalkeeping position. You know, Karina LeBlanc, Aaron McLeod, um, Steph Labe, and now Kaylin Sheridan just these young players continuing to be able to develop under experienced veterans who are excellent at their job. Um, and Kaylin Sheridan has certainly stepped into the role uh, that Steph LeBay uh, moved out of. And it's it, it's been great to see um, her put in some really world-class performances and world-class saves. It'll bode very well for them come the World Cup. Worth giving a shout out, by the way, to Erin McLeod, you just mentioned, officially announcing her retirement from the national team. Uh, she was a mainstay for so long. Who, we're never going to forget the Mohawk. Absolutely love that Canadian Mohawk that she was rocking for a very long time. She was quite the character. Uh, she was great for Canada. So, yeah, now it belongs to, to Kaylin Sheridan. You just want that kind of. What she's doing between the sticks to permeate throughout the team. Yeah, she's had she's had very solid performances. Even the last time uh, Canada played against the U.S. in the CONCACAF final, she really stood out. She saved 
save them multiple times. And just like today, you saw those amazing saves and, mm -hmm. you know, it could have been a much worse result. So, um, yeah, definitely shout out to her. She's been great. Yeah, that is true. Uh, she keeps it to 2-0. Uh, Changes from Bev Priestman we saw to start that second half, Claire. We've seen Janine Becky in the fullback position before. I don't know if the argument is still to be had on do you like her there? Do you want to see her somewhere else? Or do you think that Bev was just trying to accomplish something completely different? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm full. I'm a big enough person to uh, admit when I'm wrong. And uh, for a long time, I thought it was um, a waste to be pushing Janine uh, Becky mm -hmm. back into that fullback position. Um, despite, I mean, some excellent performances from her in that position. It, it wasn't that at all. I just thought it was a waste of an attacking player. But in a situation like today, I think getting some minutes for some of those more fringe attacking players who have not had a lot of senior caps, lot, not had a lot of minutes at this level, was really, really important. Um, and I don't, I don't actually mind Janine Becky at a fullback position. It's a place where they have a hole. Um, if Revere isn't healthy, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a, it's a place where I'd like, I'd like someone to be able to slot in. So dare I say, we push Ashley Lawrence up into the midfield. Um, it's a bit a great dream of mine to make that happen. <laughs> but, but today in particular, having Becky fill that mid, that that fullback role to allow some other players to get some minutes really is what this tournament needs to be about. Because like we said before, that attacking identity doesn't doesn't seem evident for this team. They have to find it somewhere. So they have to give some of these players minutes. Yeah, and, and I mean, Ashley Lawrence, we saw her playing pretty high up the pitch as well. She was kind of playing a little bit more of that wing back position. And, you know, Jeanine Becky has enough speed where if you give her enough runway, she has the ability to do something like that as well. But what do you want to see from this tournament I guess when it comes to Bev Priestman and you just kind of alluded to it right like try and get those offensive like try to get the spark in your offense so as much as and I will now raise my hand and admit that I want results Claire I always want results I always want to see wins because I feel like that is what will translate into something bigger but perhaps it is about the process here maybe is that how she begins to approach the She Believes Cup yeah, I, I do. I do believe that there there needs to be the opportunity given to some of these players because again, the identity is not is not solidified right now. We are struggling in that final third, and today was it really showed that. And again, you have players in the midfield. You know, Claire made the joke about Ashley Lawrence, but. I agree. I think Ashley Lawrence would be a great addition to the midfield. Um, and although that is a dream, you know, we didn't use the midfield very much today. Jesse Fleming is somebody that has always really helped with Canada's identity mm -hmm. in that attack and. We didn't see much of her, and that was, you know, that that's horrible and that's sad because Jesse is somebody that is going to create those attacking opportunities, um, whether people are clinical and finishing them or not. But there just wasn't very many opportunities created today. And putting someone like Janine Becky as a fullback, you know, yeah, she does get that freedom to go up and and create those overlapping runs because we do know what she can do in that final third. So to have her added to the the back four in a game like today, I, I think it was a smart move. Yeah, and it's it is a bit of a bitter pill to swallow because in that Concacaf Championship, that's where we really saw Julia Grosso become part of the starting 11 because she and Jesse Fleming were working so well together but I feel like I can count on one hand probably how many touches they had in this game they're going to want to change that they're going to be taking on Brazil next this is not the start that they wanted it's a 2-0 loss at the hands of the Americans Alex Morgan before the game celebrating her 200th cap for country and she got to do it with the kitties a special moment for her special moment for them. That's their hero right there. That's mom, number 200. <laughs>Two more matches to go for the Canadians, both right here on One Soccer. Next up will be Brazil Sunday. We'll get you started at 6 p.m. ET, followed by Japan on Wednesday. That's a bit of an earlier one. 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. We'll get you set up for that one. And, yes, all four teams in this She Believes Cup, all four are going to the World Cup. So great competition for the Canadian women. I have to – I mean, I – Okay, fine. Am I the captain of the excuse train? Maybe just a little bit here. But, I mean, the Canadians, as we know, this was not a good time to train. They were not – half the time they didn't train. Then they had to go back to training because of everything that was going on with Canada soccer. Did this look just like a bit of a shell shock team to you? Because I had mentioned going to break how brilliant Jesse Fleming and Julia Grosso had looked in that midfield. 
that didn't look the case. Kadisha Buchanan and Vanessa Gilles, this is, these are strong center backs. That didn't look the case. Uh, we know that Adriana Leon can score goals. What was going on? I don't, I don't know if I'm the one saying they just looked a little shell-shocked. No, I, I agree. I think they did look rattled, um, especially right off the bat. You know, it looked like they were surprised that the Americans were coming at them so fast and they didn't know how to deal with it. They were trying to clear the ball and giving it right back to them, which typically, you know, like we've spoken about, we're great defensively. Can, the Canadians are able to usually build out of the back and, and find those midfield players. And today it just, they did look rattled. And I'm not sure if that's, you know, that's why, but I, I do think that it did have a hand in it. Claire, what do you need to see from them in the next game against Brazil? Uh, yeah, a more cohesive defensive performance would be a good start. They're always very evenly matched with Brazil. All four of the teams in this tournament, I think, are very evenly matched. Uh, but I would start with a more a cohesive defensive uh, performance. You're right, they did look off. And it is very difficult to take the field and play in matches like this when you're unsupported by your federation. Um, but the World Cup is a stressful environment as well. And there's always things going on off the field, illness, what have you. You have to be able to rally in those stressful moments and be able to perform on the pitch. So against Brazil, I expect a much more cohesive defensive performance, much more communication, and please play Jesse Fleming in a more attacking role. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, you've been saying that since the start. <laughs> uh, because, and this, because this, this has to be a massive disappointment because I had a chance to even speak to Bev Priestman about a month ago where she was really excited getting ready for the She Believes Cup. And she's like, we want redemption from how that game ended against the Americans in the final of the CONCACAF championship. This is not what she had in mind. No, definitely not. This was not their best performance, and I think everyone walked away today a little disappointed. Um, again, I do think that they're fighting with a lot on, mm -hmm. on the inside, and um, it did show. So, yeah, it's definitely it definitely wasn't a great day for Canada. Not a great opening start for the Canadians at the She Believes Cup. A 2-0 loss. The hands of the hosts, the Americans in this one. Jess Lisi, Claire Rusted, I'm Annie Petrillo. We will be with you throughout the tournament here on One Soccer. Thanks for tuning in. See you Sunday.